Let's see, hold on a second. So usually what I do is like I, I I lay out a plan, you know, play it out, like get the muscle memory in, after the end, of you know, build up the the, the run confidence, and then stick with it west. for a bit. This marked the beginning of the era. Called and Cold then War. when I feel the need to start like changing things out while keeping like the rest of the run intact, then I do so. But I don't, I don't prefer to like change stuff up in the middle of a run. It's just it, it's a gamble. Unless if something that I'm doing is so painstakingly easy that it doesn't, like, jeopardize the run at all. But if it's something like, oh yeah, run this way versus that way for a prison escape with a route that I haven't tried before, uh, probably not. Um, do I plan to do it the, the current way? Yes. You know, which involves throwing the noodles, going left while holding the smoke grenade out to silence your footsteps, and then just go left. Um, I do intend to do that, but will it be today? No. You know, there's a bunch of other things, too, that can optimize the run, but I just, uh... I, I kind of like to do things my own way for a while, just to kind of get comfortable with it. And once I'm, I'm good with everything, then I start substituting in, like, okay, instead of doing this, let me practice this, and if I like it, and if it works, you know, practice it some more... Until it becomes, like, second nature to the run. Where I don't have to really, like, stop and think about it. However, the one thing I did do yesterday, thanks to a chat, was, uh... For throwing the grenades for the pain from third person instead of first. That helped out a lot. Because I struggled from time to time to try to get the grenade in the right placement before he rolls out of the way or just, you know, doesn't blow off the armor. Because it seems like throwing him from third, it doesn't throw it as far and it gives it a, a better arc where it lands like in the middle of the island that he's on. Which helps out a lot. Because when the grenade plants, like plants it in the middle... It's almost like a guarantee that it's going to hit him and blow the armor off. Because I think my misunderstanding of that situation was that... I always felt that the grenade had to be close in order for the impact to hit him. For blowing the, the B armor off of him. Because the stun grenades are just like that. I mean, they can disorient a guard from a distance. But it doesn't knock them out. Because it only knocks them out when the grenade is practically right at their feet. It has to be really close. You know, like, I don't have, like, a number in mind, but it's, like, it's... The ra the impact radius for a stun grenade is very small. While the grenade impact radius is probably, like, twice the size. Maybe even larger. At least regarding the pain. And on top of that, what I also didn't know was that you could use the smoke grenades to blow the armor off. Because, again, in my head, I'm thinking, well, a smoke grenade does explode, but does it have that lethal velocity that actually allows it to blow off the armor? You know, because I think that's what my mind was wrapped around at the time. I was like, okay, a grenade explodes, it goes up and out, and it actually does, like, lethal velocity damage. Whether if he's, like, in the blast radius or not. But for some reason with a smoke, I never considered that. I was like, yeah, a smoke grenade does blow up, but does it have that that impact from a distance where it blows the armor off? Because a stun grenade doesn't. And at least I don't think it does, but... So that that both of those will help me with the pain today if I get to him. It'll save on grenade management. And I won't have to, like, jump in the water to get more grenades. So that should definitely help speed up the fight a little bit. Oh, yeah, we're, we're a little bit faster this time now.
All right, just one miscue. Hey, did you look at that? I actually saved time there. It's amazing how you go from like uh, plus 25, 30 to actually saving time. But it goes to show what happens when, you know, what a few missed shots will do. Because it's kind of hard to realize, like, what happens when missing a shot, like, how much time that really takes away. Because not only is he adjust the, the act of taking another shot, but it's reacting to that miss, re-aiming it. As well as, perhaps, like, what situation is caused by it, such as, uh, yesterday where I missed and would ricochet... You know, those that would cause a lot of issues on, on, on top of that. Hey, what's up, KSB? Alright, seem to be nailing that one now. You just gotta throw it high. As long as I throw it high, then it's almost guaranteed to hit them both. I'm not playing this on the PC. It's on the PS3. I mean, I imagine how, how, how good this game would look on the PC. Or even just like the cut down on loading times. What's your setup? I want to improve my streams too. Uh, depending on how you're watching the stream, if you're watching it on the PC or some kind of a desktop browser, um, I have like a setup of my PC specs and, and accessories listed in there. If not, if you're watching it on the mobile, you can type in um, exclamation point PC to show like all my PC items. And I think there's a, an exclamation point accessories command as well that'll list uh, some of the accessories involved. You know, because depending on what you're looking for, one of those two commands may help you. Unless if there's something that you need to ask me about, which I, uh, I wouldn't mind answering depending on what it was. See, now I got all four of them this time. I don't know what happened the first time. But I need to see that enemy number drop to four. If it drops to anything but that, then I know that something's wrong. Because once it drops to four, then this guy is in a position where he ought to be.
All right, gain some time back. yesterday too. I select the wrong one. Oh, the time loss. I wouldn't bother with the weapons. They're going to get taken away in a few cutscenes. Um, not the AK though. That, that stays. But the pistols, yeah, they, they get swapped around a lot. I mean, like, most of your, I would say, like, extra items for weapons stay in between cutscenes, but anything that involves your MK-22 or the, uh, the M19, those get enabled and disabled, you know, throughout the game. Or rather, like, your, your starting weapon. You know, gets changed. Or like an Ocelot's um, fight, for example. You start with no weapon. You know, you start unarmed. So I have to equip to the MK-22 each time. You like the croc cap, but it's not necessary to have. Just funny for the codec calls? Yeah. I think my other file has, like, all the bonus stuff. At least regarding, like, a lot of, like, the goofy items that you can get. If the croc kick had some kind of usefulness in a speedrun, I would get it. <laughs> Even if it was just for the lulls. Should be, like, a bonus incentive where, uh, like, people would want to see the stream... Or, or, like, the speed run with the crack cap on the entire time. Oh, shit. Okay, not the end of the world, but I am going to lose time to this. gonna show up any minute now. What's wrong? Just my imagination. Alright, we're good. I'm probably gonna lose a little bit of time to this. Unless if I uh, skip the, the shack. Yeah, the box does a lot of things for you in this game. Not only just for extinguishing fire, but for maintaining your, your speed momentum from uh, when you're either if you're flat or going downhill, but especially for inclines for going uphill. It's really useful for that. Hey, what's up, Sagohi? How you doing, dude? Uh, is that his head? Oh, I guess it was his head. Mm, I'll skip the shack. Or actually, maybe not. I don't know if it's worth it just to save a few seconds. Because I need those stun grenades. It's either I lose the time here or lose it in the Ocelot fight. Is 
Besides, I already lost whatever lead I had because of the ricochet. About to hop off to chow down on some steak fried chicken. Wow, that sounds delicious. Shoot the beehive? Nah, we can't do that. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> If I was really behind, I would have uh, done the Pinhead Larry cameo, but I still want to get a, still want to get like a relatively decent time. Use the cigar; it helps with darkness. You don't really need it, though. I mean, if you memorize the cave, you don't need the cigar. Because the health is gonna be important for the pain fight, so I can't... I can't really have, like, health go down, even for just a little bit. The cigar comes into play later with the prison escape. That's, that's not the end of the world. He, he, he took the armor off just in time for me to get some shots in, but... Not ideal, though. Oh, and he does the bullet bees on top of it. Oh my god. Bullet beat. 
How did that miss? Hmm. I don't know how that missed. It must not have been straight with the camera. I'll run it. Um, Dark Cedo, I didn't want to say this before, but I, I appreciate all the help, but maybe just kind of ease off a little bit on the back seating. You know, I, I generally appreciate when people try to help me with things if I get stuck or if I ask for it, but there's a time when you either become a little, little too back seedy or just, you know, where it can get annoying. And I don't say this out of, like, any disrespect, but maybe just kind of relax a little bit. You know, because, uh, I understand some of the things that you're trying to tell me, but some of them I can't do or they don't benefit the run to that effect. But I, I appreciate it, though. But just maybe, uh, just chill out for a bit. I don't need to get the camo because I already have it. You know, because I'm running on a new game plus which has all the Kroba camos already. See if I can get this barrel thing without hitting the guy's leg twice, like I did yesterday. <laughs> What's up, Cart? Wait, is it a box emote? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Uh, wait, what if I do this? Do I have any stuns? 
See if I can get them. I don't know if I hit them, but this better work. Come in, HQ. This is HQ. Oh. Woo! Nailed it. It is a boxy mode. How about that? What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh wow, how about that? It's an actual boxy mode. Hi, how you doing, man? Oh my god, is it that 12-parter emote? <laughs> oh my god, it is a 12-parter. The Frieza one. <laughs> oh man, it's a work of art, I'll tell you that. Well, seeing as you're doing uh, 12-parters and, uh, and box emotes, I could tell you're having a good day, Cart. Wow, man, hydrated bots on, on, on top of it. <laughs> They're reminding me to drink water, and I just did. Actually, I did it before they, they reminded me. Yeah, take that hydration bot. Oh, shit. And what is up with me and my shots today? Huh? Oh my god. Oh, this is gonna be problematic when I get out. What's going on out there? I think I have enough ammo just for these guys when I get out, and only just. <sighs> Jeez. Tired as shit. Hopefully, rendering for the last times for the intro. Oh, sorry to hear that, dude. You know, hopefully, uh... Yeah, hopefully you'll get a second win with whatever you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it, Al? You know, people might ask me, it's like, Oh, when are you gonna get your 12-parter emote? It's like, well, as soon as I can get above five emotes... <laughs> What's his deal? Hasn't he seen a scientist roll up to the door before? I swear to God, these guards are something else sometimes. Let's 
someone's in here. Uh, at least Granite thought it was funny. What do you think you're doing? Uh, well, clearly, I'm a scientist in a cardboard box. It's science. I'm telling you, man, these guards don't know anything from anything. <laughs> Four-parter Donkey Kong emote. Oh my god. He has like such a smug look on it on it too. All right, I gotta focus here because I only got five shots. To, uh, I have to search these guys for ammo because I don't, ha I don't have enough to go into the next zone. And there's nothing underneath the truck. Or is there? Oh, it does respawn in the truck. Oh, we're good then. I should have checked there first. He didn't know what to do with his emote, so he made a 16 slot Frieza. Yeah, sometimes you come up with the craziest things when you're, uh. Yeah, like when you run out of options. We got the fain we got the fear skip to work yesterday. See if we can do it again. Oh, he's behind. All right, that's okay. had him. Alright, I think that's it's probably as best as it's going to be. It's unfortunate that the, that the log didn't kill him. But as far as, uh, yeah, getting like, you know, 90% of his stamina down and I had time to get ammo. It's, it's probably as best as it's going to get. Because, like, normally you want him to be in front of the tripwire because it's more of a guarantee that he'll get knocked out from it. But if he's behind the rope, then there's a slight chance that he won't take, like, the final hit, like, just like what happened there. But if it does happen, then you just need, like, a couple shots to finish him off.
gonna skip the ammo here. We'll get it at the shack. He has more, but those are the multi-box ones. He has 34 slots in total for T1. Yeah, it's always interesting, like, what people do with their emote slots. You know, whereas in my case, I have to be very selective, you know, due to the fact I only get up to five. Plus one for each, you know, tier two and tier three. But hey, if I work up to partner one day, then uh, maybe I can do some goofy, uh, you know, four-parter, 16-parter emotes. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be something? Hey, what's up, Latonic? How you doing, man? Where is he? Oh, wait, there he is. Shit. Huh? HQ respond. I can't see him. Patrol here. We're What's going on? Respond. I actually ran out of bullets. Okay, so this is gonna be problematic for the end because I won't get my first three shots now. Because I decided not to get the ammo in the warehouse. Uh, but let's see if I can get into the shack without him seeing me. See him. Lost your nerve, I couldn't see him. I legit could not see him. Oh, well, definitely not the way I wanted to start that. think he was here, but I always want to double check. So 
bomb the size. Alright, good. At least I got him out of there. Now to see where he went. All right, far corner. <laughs> Kicking an old man while he's down. Well, normally I would have an issue with it, but you gotta remember, this isn't an, any ordinary old man either. Oh wow, he's really in that far corner. Oh, wait, there he is. I... I don't even know what to say. I aimed right at his head. I aimed for the muzzle, the... I aimed for the lens flare. Wow, so I had to hit his leg to hit him. That makes sense. All right, he's still there. All right, there he is. Freeze. Where did you? It's a photosynthetic, photosynthetic man. Well, not only is he photosynthetic, but look how fast he runs. Clearly far from ordinary. Hey, what's up, Nightdown? Uh, you can call me Joseph or Jojo. No, not Mr. Joestar. Well, I mean, Mr. Joestar wouldn't be bad either. I mean, that, that's part of the series, but... Yeah, Joseph or Jojo would be fine. You know, because Mr. Joestar is what he was referred to in Stardust Crusaders as the old man. And I'm far from an old man. Now, I know someone someone in there is going to say, Oh, well, I think you're an old man. You know, but before you go ahead and do that, well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Cart. How the run's been tonight? Uh, whoop! Oh, uh, that that's 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 how you know is uh, the runs are whoop. Can I aim through this tree? Freeze. <laughs> I've got a present for you. Alright, lost a little bit of time, but, uh... It's better than what I usually get. Yo, Japanese Wombaroo with the tier one sub. Yo, thanks. Thank you for that. Welcome to the Joe Stars. I mean, at least you don't sound like one. All right. At least, at least we can agree that we're we're on that that uh, we're on we're on agreement with that one. <laughs> All 
All right, but here's the ladder. Figured it was time enough. Hey, thank you, dude. I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. Cart, what am I going to do with you? I thought you liked the voice cracks. <laughs> no, but thank you for the sub, dude. I really appreciate it. Man, isn't this the best ladder ever? Man, no matter how many times I've ascended that ladder, it, 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 it doesn't make the goosebumps go away. I mean, name me a game that has a ladder that's better than that. I mean, th th this is the ladder to ascend all ladders. One ladder to rule them all. Oh, yeah, and the... Uh, <laughs> Gotta change camels too. Desert Choco Chip. Who was that? It was nobody. Way better than yesterday. For two hours? Yikes, dude. I'm no video editor, but that sounds like a pain in the ass to me. Doesn't seem like I can headshot him from the back. It's just the hitbox is way too small. Or I have to wait for him to like turn his head a bit. Or worst case, I just do what I did there and just do a double hit. Make him turn around and then finish him.
way better than yesterday. Smooth. Okay, and then just wait for this guy. Perfect. That was a pretty smooth uh, mountain region. Almost smooth. Because uh, apparently opening up doors is hard. <laughs> First After Effects, then added text in movie edit, which is rendering now, which will roughly be 40 minutes, then render to YouTube to get feedback from people before you show it. Usually you can do other stuff while it's rendering, but there isn't much to do at 3.26 a.m. Yeah, I hear you, but that still sounds like a pain in the ass. But hey, at least you get to watch the stream for a bit. But then again, you could be sleeping. Monka, hmm. You know, then 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 Monster Man comes in, he's like, What sleep, dirt face? that strategy better like let him see you so he moves out of the way but only enough to where he wants to investigate because if you move too much or get too close then it's an instant alert which i've i have lost runs to it before because i moved too close oh my god could you could you get over the railing jeez So we'll get our Zambi in our uh, fire suit. Oh, I missed it. I was way too slow. Why did he do that? What? He, he he attacked the wrong way. What? I've never seen him do that. I, I, I don't know what to say to that. He, he completely attacked the wrong way. I'll take it. Yeah, that's a gold. Wait, I mean, I'm trying to process, like, how that happens. Like, I shot him, 
But, like, what, what causes him to turn around and just attack the complete other direction, exposing his back to me? Man, here I thought I've seen it all. <laughs> hey, what's up, Dabrunsky? Every time I make it to your stream, you're you're taking on the Fury. Well, at least uh, around this time you did. You know, yesterday... Yesterday was a pretty rough day. I think I saw something. Well, I think you saw nothing. Man, that, that has got to be one of the weirdest things I've seen him do. And he's done some pretty weird shit before. But I've never seen him, like, take a barrage of hits like that, and then turn around, attack the completely other direction from where I'm at, and then I get a second series of shots on him. It's never happened like that before. Commence alert formation. What's going on? Respond. Oh, I did that too soon. There's something wrong. Support unit. Confirm their status. Alright, that's fine. These guys will still show up. What's wrong? Yeah, it'll just make them show up a little bit later. Can you explain the CQC and how you use it against the boss? Like, explain it for a noob. I've seen people just throw her onto the ground repeatedly and trank her while she just uses CQC to counter my attacks. Alright, let me see if I can do my best to explain it to somebody that may not be as, uh... Oh, I forgot to split it, by the way. Um... So let me see if I can try to explain it for somebody that may not be as uh, familiar with the fight, let alone the game itself. Um... So really, for the boss, you know, as far as using CQC, is you have to use CQC defensively. Because if you try to go up to her and challenge her with a CQC grab... You're going to lose that engagement most of the time, and you're going to get thrown to the ground. But what you can do in that, in that fight is if the boss charges you as Snake, so if she comes after you where she says, oh, get ready, or here I come, like she's basically charging at you, what you do is you let her get, she, you know, just let her come to you or, or run to her, same difference, right? So you just let her approach you. You know, when she's when she's charging you. And Sir. And then the minute she goes to grab you, hold circle immediately and just keep it held. Because while she tries to grab you, while you do it as a defense maneuver, what happens is as you hold circle, as she goes to grab you, Snake overpowers her during that moment, and then he breaks free. Where she's now put into a like a defensiveless state, 
in which people can either grab or slam her to the ground or, or do whatever. But basically, all you do is just three things. Is let her come to you. Don't go to her. So let her come to you. And the second she tries to grab you, not before, but like the minute she goes to grab you on that frame, hold circle. Right? So here's circle. So hold circle down immediately as soon as she goes to grab and what's gonna happen is like it'll show like her trying to grab you but then as you're holding circle snake will break free of it and do some kind of like you know like uh maneuvering action with it and then it leaves the boss defenseless for that moment only and then from there you can either do like a, a cqc slam where you hold circle and the left stick down or you could do like a cqc grab which i wouldn't advise doing but what I do is, um, you know, let her come to me, hold circle, you know, as soon as she goes to grab me, and, and I promise you, if you hold circle the minute she tries to grab you, you will win most of those engagements, as long as you do it properly. And then you can either choose to slam her or shoot her or whatever. Wow, you really like the the sound of Sokolov uh, getting beaten to death, Cart. <laughs> but not for long. Well then, let's get started. What is your target? <laughs> wow, Alan is some more. It's like, oh, oh, man, it's like, man, you know, we we just. Or Sokolov, or maybe it's the legacy. Yeah, just like yeah, let's just listen Answer to the to this the entire stream just with Sokolov getting beaten to death. Who let you in here? Whoa. You're a tough one. Yeah, Platonic brings up a good point, Dobrunsky, because uh, what she does tend to do sometimes is as she comes up to you, what she'll do is she'll come up to you and then she'll sidestep, you know, to kind of bait you into grabbing her. So you always want to wait until the moment when she really does go to grab you. Because, like Protonic says, if you try to grab her out of, like, instinct, and she does the sidestep grab, that leaves you open, and then you'll lose that engagement with her. What's going on? That actually really helps and makes sense. Thanks a lot. Hey, no problem. I hope uh, I hope you could take whatever I um, take whatever I gave you in that explanation and use it to uh, to your uh, advantage. You know, hopefully have a good uh, a good boss fight with it. Yeah, but like I said, it's make sure you use it defensively. Don't go after her with it because she'll insta-slam you. And at the same time, when she does present herself to uh, to grab you, um, don't fall for the sidestep bait because that's what she, that's why she does it. You know, it's to like trick you into grabbing her, but always wait until the actual moment she goes to grab you. And if you hold circle just in time when you're doing it, you'll win it most times. I always used a Trank Sniper Rifle, but always wanted to try and do the way you speedrunners do it. Well, I use the Sniper too. But... You know, I only use the CQC if I have to because of that. You know, because, like, she's dangerous up close. You don't want to screw around with her, you know, when, she, when it comes to CQC. So, most CQC that I do are, are just purely out of defensive 
maneuvers where if she happens to like catch me up close and I have to like, you know, guard myself. But yeah, most times I, I use the, the, the Mosin. It's the safest and somewhat consistent way of, of how I could do it. <laughs> Under attack? All right, good placement. Throw number two, and then over the truck. Perfect. <laughs> you must be lurking nearby. But yeah, so rather if you try to do it through, you know, via CQC or Mosin or whatever. That's just my my only advice as far as uh, using CQC defensively. I don't go after her for CQC. I let the Mosin do the job, and if I run out of ammo, which seems to happen most times, then I resort to the pistol, followed by CQC. Is there a trick for avoiding dogs besides tranking them? <laughs> yeah, eating them. Um, yeah, tranking them is one thing. But as far as the prison escape is concerned, uh, the smoke grenade would be your option. Because you don't have your equipment here. But the way I do the prison escape, I use the smokes for a different reason. Not to, you know, keep the dog away. But it's to smoke the first two guards that meet up in that corner. Followed by the guard that's to the upper left. By a bunch of shacks. And then the final guard, which is in the, um, the pipe area off to the side. So it blocks his vision while as I walk up to the entrance and then crawl through. Hey, no problem, Dabrinsky. I uh, like I said. I, I hope you, uh, yeah, I hope you can make use out of, uh, you know, you know what you got, and you know, put it to good use. Hey, thanks, Botanic. Uh, have a good night, dude. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching.
And then, Debrensky, if you're still around, um, I will also gladly demonstrate it uh, from what I just explained. You know, so, like, if you're around for, like, the till the end of the run, um, I'll also demonstrate it for the, the boss fight itself. But it sounds like, to me, you got the gist of it. But I also don't mind, like, demonstrating it either. So you can actually see, like, what it looks like. You know, which should come up in the next, uh... I want to say, like, 20-25 minutes, hopefully. Just assuming that I don't get screwed over by Volgan again. Yikes, almost almost uh, took off my box too early. What's this box huh? Oh shit. Uh okay, that's not good. No, nope, no, nope, take the box off. Alright, he didn't run away like he was supposed to, but. Uh, we're all good. Plant the first bomb. Shit. All right, hold on. I didn't plant the first fucking bomb. This is HQ. What's going on? Under fire. Be position unknown. Commencing alert steps. Acknowledged. Sending reinforcements. Use extra. Yeah. Uh, just. Uh... Just ignore me right there as I plant the bomb with you <laughs> nearby. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe I forgot to plant the first bomb. No wonder why he saw me like that. I skipped it. Because usually you plant the first bomb as, as soon as you get, and then when you take the shot, he runs away. Alright, that'll just cost me uh, some seconds there. Oh yeah, sneaking suit. Not chancing with this guy. Okay. Here it comes. Hey, what's up, Fest Daddy? <laughs> Been up for 24 hours? Jesus, Kart. Yeah, get some sleep, dude. Uh, thanks for watching. Alright, I gotta concentrate here.
Wow, really you gotta do that? I I'm glad that I didn't get hit by it, but Jesus. I mean, he did that literally out of nowhere. Oh, I missed one. Man, fuck that fight. <sighs> Man, do you know how pissed off I got from this damn thing yesterday? You know, I, I lost a fox sound to him. Man, it, it feels so good to, to smash his head to the ground like that. But still, he did that fucking floor thing out of nowhere. I mean, I, I'm glad I blindly rolled through the first one, but jeez. I mean, like, as if he needs to make my life harder. <laughs> Did I just go Super Saiyan? I wish. Hey, good night, Cart. Thanks for watching, man. I thought I hit him.
Man, even I was getting dizzy from that. <laughs> Jeez. It's like I gotta slow the R2 spam a little bit because I keep missing out on shots. I planted four C3 charges. Three more bombs left. Three more left. Only one more left. Keep your aim steady. Keep your aim steady. Keep your aim steady. Shadowhut, it's here! I like how she says that repeatedly with the same tone of voice. You know, about keeping your aim steady. Substrate cash. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? A uh, 360 no scope for the bridge. Hey, what's up, Tommy 1K? That stupid frog. I heard it in the background. I must have hit it. No, Eva, other way, other way. Eva, go the other way. What are you doing? No. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, Eva, you just had to go the other way. Oh my god, Eva. Eva's driving was good up until that last moment where she kept going, like, to the right. And I needed her to turn. Ah, I missed it. All right, there's your 360. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, she's she's definitely a troll when it comes to the driving for the Shagohad. A hundred percent. She doesn't want you to be getting them to fire no scopes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like, Doc, is that you? Get 
You know, I actually think Dak would enjoy playing this game, and you know why? Not only for sequences like this, but I think he would like the end fight. You know, a one-on-one -on -one sniper's duel. I mean, maybe he doesn't have to do it, like, you know, with, like, uh, being non-lethal, but if you give him an SVD... I mean, which is the closest sniper that you get up to that point. I mean, I think he would enjoy that fight. Just great. Oh my god, get off of me. Jesus, there we go. I hate these guys so much. Oh yeah, he would definitely have the the overlays for something like this made. Yeah, I, I potatoed really bad there. Give me something. Definitely not one of the better bike sequences I've had. Hey, no problem, dude.
Yeah, thanks for watching and uh, have a good night, man. Yeah, if I get Fox Sound out of this, uh, this it'll definitely go on the Twitter. You you can bet you can bet on that one. Let's, uh, let's feed her. Should be good for the next section. Can I have seconds? And then just uh, one final fight. All right, and that's the final guard.
All right, so she's gonna come up right away. Let's see what you're made of. Wait a second, and then hold circle immediately. So as soon as she goes to grab, just hold circle. Excellent. You know, like that. That's how you like uh, outplay her with the CQC at the start. Hey, what's up, Zico? All right, we don't want that shot. Oh, she's getting closer. We gotta get some distance between her. You've gotten stronger. Uh, I actually lost sight of her. All right, there she is. All right, she's going to the far tree. Ah, uh, I missed it. Shit. Oh, I can't believe I did, did that. Alright, gotta get some distance again. Man, I can't believe I missed that. Man, I, that, I was one bullet away from ending that early. I can't believe I was late. Because that would have been a perfect boss fight if I had not have missed that one. Because you have enough ammo to take her out with the full 16. But you have to hit, like, majority headshots, though. That's the that's that's where it makes the difference. Take this. Keep it safe. Other than that, that boss fight was pretty pretty near perfect. I only missed one shot, got the first CQC like you usually you know, like you're usually supposed to. And I don't know, I mean the Mosin's a pretty safe strategy. I mean as long as you can line up your headshots, I missed that one, but still it was a good fight, it was really quick. I didn't really put myself in a situation where she charged me. Kill me. Kill me now. And quite honestly, it was still a good fight. There's only room for one boss and one snake. The hydration bot did a good job on your aim for the bus. <laughs> oh, that goddamn hydration bot. This is the saddest moment in video game history. I don't care what you say. Yeah, it's, it's still pretty... I mean, I, I probably would agree with you. I mean, as far as, like, in the Metal Gear franchise, I would well, say. You know, maybe not in video game history, necessarily, but in, the, like, the Metal Gear franchise, I 100% agree. It's it's sad. You know, it's really sad. I mean, she goes from serving her country as a hero to being uh, branded as a traitor and then dying at the hands of her pupil of, uh, you know, then becoming Big Boss. You know, it's pretty rough. That was a hell of a run. I'm pretty sure we got Foxhound on top of it. I don't know what my final time's gonna be, but I'd, I'd say, uh... I'd say the possibility of a sub-2-hour Foxhound is like... Let's see, it's 
it's probably like 10 minutes of credits. I say it's like 99%. I think we got it, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm not gonna count my eggs before they hatch. You know, I'm gonna wait until the very end, wait till I get the score screen, because it's not on the, um, the the live split timer. I mean, the live split timer just gives me an idea of what the final time is gonna be, minus you know in-game lag. And so I would say, let's see, I would say I probably either got like a 157. Or maybe a 156. Because I had a really good boss fight. And Volgan. Despite the fact that Volgan did the freaking, um... You know, floor electrification thing that he does. You know, once every, like, 100 attempts. I mean, the fear skip almost worked. And I still saved time. Let's see. The end was still a good fight, but I lost a little bit of time there. Fury was just, I don't know what the hell to think about it. I don't know. I had to go back in the VOD and clip that. I mean, I don't know how the hell he does that. Like, why he just turns around, flame throws the, the opposite direction of where I'm shooting him from, and then exposes back to me. Yeah, I like MGS3 a lot. I mean, I like it for different reasons than, you know, than some of the other games. Like, I like them all, but I like different things about them. Like, if I want a technically challenging game where virtually every, you know, room that you go into, you have to be on top of your game, MGS2 is the one to play. You know, there's a lot of tricks, a lot of glitches involved. Very technically challenging. But it's still uh, an enjoying experience too, as long as you you know you play uh, fairly decent. This game's a lot more long range shooting, you know, outdoors fighting. You know, the camouflage system is, eh, I don't know. The whole menuing in and out, you know, a lot of the time is kind of kind of a drag. But you know, I like the boss fights more because they're actual boss fights. Like MGS2, your only boss fights are Olga, Fat Man, the Harrier. And bam, you know, and Solidus, like that's it. I mean, Fortune doesn't count as a boss fight. You know, I mean, then you have the raise, but at least in this game, you actually have a series of bosses to go through with Ocelot, Pain, Fury, and um, you know, and then you know, Vulgan, Shagohad, the boss, and you have actual boss fights. And then MGS4. MGS4 kind of brings the control scheme to more of a modern style, which is nice. Again, it's mostly long-range shooting, but the boss fights are not really as good. You know, with the exception of the Rex versus Ray and the final fight with Liquid, that's it. You know, the four boss fights with the, you know, with the Beauty, uh, with the Be Beauty and the Beast fights. I mean, I don't know. I mean they're okay, but they're 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 not. It's like they're not like you're fighting the end or the Harrier, like like something that's iconic. You know, like that that that's why I, I don't think the MGS4 boss fights are as that exciting, with the exception of like the Rex versus Ray. That that that's so iconic. You're taking two of the you know Metal Gears that we've seen up to this point and putting them head to head against each other. I mean, who wouldn't want that? And then the final fight with Snake versus Liquid. That's just a, a, a send-off to the fans, you know, of the four different phases of the boss fight mimic the four styles of the games. You know, it, 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 it puts it all together. Like, those are the boss fights to have. You know, the four Beauty and the Beast fights, I mean, I don't know, take it for what you will, but they're not that great. Favorite MGS game? I mean, I bought this PS3 unit for MGS4 at the time, even though I was playing 2 and 3 on a different console, which was my brother's. So I still played them all, but getting the PS3 was solely for their MGS4 at the time. But I don't know, I mean... 
I would still say MGS4 is probably up there, followed by 2. 2 is a very technically challenging game, but it can be very vicious too to play. You know, you can die very easily. But MGS4 I always thought was like a proper send off for Snake. You know, per the reasons like I, I just stated about, you know, the whole Rex versus Ray in, this, in the liquid fight. And then three is like a like a somewhat more. It's still a challenging game, but it's not as stressful. I mean, yesterday's stream was the exception because you know, yeah, I, I'll, I'll get irritated after resetting for so many hours and then having my run die after it. I mean, who, who doesn't? But it's still a cool game. I mean, the end fight's probably one of the best fights in the game. You know that people remember. MGS4 was sad. Yeah, I mean, you know, Snake is not in the best state. You know, he's getting old. You know, yes, possibly near Rosalind death. Rattin you know, Rattin within like a month or so. Yeah, so he's pretty much at the end of his lifespan. You know, even the way the series ends off, I mean, it's it's still pretty sad. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid yeah, was yeah, definitely yeah, like a lot of first games for people of the franchise if they didn't play the Metal Gear One and Two on the NES version. I believe the White House will be satisfied. So, MGS was definitely like a staple for people. Khrushchev is finished. Your time has finally arrived. But, uh, but like I said, I like I like each of the four games for yes. their own different the reasons. I don't particularly like like one above all the others just, affair. you know, as like as a definite, you know, balls. it should make you know, one one all be all, but I would say it would be four because of the uh just, you know, the the moments yes, yes, of ending the course. series. I'll keep the you know, the here. final fights that you have, followed by two because it's probably one of the most challenging games I've ever played. And then this. Not to say that MGS3 is like, you know, the worst out of the three, but that's just how I feel about them. And then I didn't really play a whole lot of MGS1, believe it or not. Like, I've yes, played it, me. you know, maybe like a few times on the PSX version. The boss is a And then I played more of Twin Snakes than... And MGS1 legacy is now safely with us in America's hands. You know, so like that's that's kind of where I get most of my MGS1 experience from, which is from Twin, Twin Snakes, which I know the community is not. I don't know. I mean, there's people that still speed run it, but I know that not everybody liked it either. <laughs> Peking must be in an uproar right about now. I'm afraid so. Only half the money has made it back to the United States. <sighs> the KGB must still have part of the legacy. Yes, the weapon has been reduced to ashes. That's right. Grozny Grad has been obliterated by the Davy Crockett we brought in as well. Yes, that was the boss's work too. Speaking of which, I've obtained something from Gran and Yo, Tommy, thank you for story. the follow. It's a yeah, thank you very much for that. Nuclear attack system. Perhaps it might just come in handy someday. Yes, we have John, I mean Snake, to thank for that. Khrushchev believed it as well. Yes, they bought our story. I don't think they'll be making a fuss. The secondary alert has been lifted as well. And the Soviets still haven't discovered my true identity. They have no idea that I've been triple crossing them. I will continue my activities as a contact for the new government. Yes, it appears that no one knew that I was Adam. Of course. I'm always at the CIA's disposal. Mr. Director. Okay. There it is. Sub two hour Foxhound. One fifty four twenty two. 
Man. Well, there you have it. I mean, th this is what should have happened yesterday. You know, I was close to this, and, you know, Volgan took it away. You get past Volgan, you get the Fox Sound. Absolutely. Man, hell of a good run. So we got European Extreme under 154.22. Zeros down the board for saves, continues, alerts, kills. I was hurt twice, which was probably from the end. And possibly the Fury. I don't know if I got hurt in the Fury. But definitely on the end. And then one life bar damage. Pretty pretty average for me. And uh, and that's Fox Sound. 